Hey folks, welcome to the channel. My name's Colin, call sign MM0 OPX. In this video, I just want to give an overview of my 20 meter um, portable Moxon project that I've been working on. Um, now, I've had this in the air already, uh, just at my house, um, but it wasn't quite right. Um, the resonance was up about 14.4, 14.5, and the resonance dip was only about 2 to 1 SWR. So uh, I'm not quite sure if that was to do with my surrounding um, objects and my garden lamp posts, uh, existing antennas and so on. Um, so what I've done is i brought it up to my parents' house. Um, there's a little bit less obstructions here. And the idea is to get it set up, um, try it out as it is without changing anything. And if things are just not right, hopefully I've got enough bits and pieces here um, to allow me to modify it and uh, get the uh, antenna up to by somewhat. Um, but what I'll do first is I'll actually show you some of the main components um, of the antenna before we actually put it up. And this is the main components for the antenna itself. Now the spreaders, I'm actually using four uh, five meter wind jammer uh, poles. If you've seen my video of my um, fiberglass pole review, um, you'll see that I rate these quite highly, especially for the cost. Now they're five meters, but I don't actually use the outside section which comes in very handy, so effectively it, the outside section just acts as a protector for the sections that I do use. I guess the most important part here is the base plate. Now this took me the longest time to actually design and come up with, so I've designed this all myself. Now the material in the middle, I did a lot of experiments and bought a few different types of materials, but this is actually a type of laminate, so there's aluminium top and bottom and in the middle there's I think it's some type of acrylic but this was this is and this is six millimeters thick in total um, and believe it or not this is actually some of the cheapest material you can buy and it's actually the strongest because it's laminated hence why I've used it and um, to connect the um, poles I'm using these um, rubber uh, rubber clamps as you've seen me if you've seen my other videos you can see that I use these quite a lot I really really rate these um, on the other side, you can see I've got a piece of aluminium angle attached to the base plate. And you can see I've got another two rubber clamps. Um, and these actually fit onto the spider beam pole, which we'll get to in a minute. And this SO239 here, this is just a chassis connector. So the antenna connects to here, and then the coax um, to the radio connects to the bottom side. This base plate, this is just for the 12 meter spider beam pole, so it stops it moving about. Um, this is the antenna wires itself. You'll see this once I get it unraveled. So here's the obviously the coax connection. It's actually soldered and then it's covered in a li liquid electrical tape, so it's got total weatherproof weatherproofed. The wire that I'm using is Nevada 28D. Originally this was covered in a green, like a silicon coating, but I actually removed this for another antenna project and um, I didn't and I didn't use it. So now I'm using it here. Now it's a tinned copper. Um, tin copper braid but in the middle of it it's actually Kevlar so it's extremely strong and there's a little patch cable there obviously that'll go to the um, chassis connector on the on the base plate here's a little uh, just a little guy plate I made it will fit onto the top of the spider beam pole um, Jubilee clips as we call them hose clamps and um, these will keep the pole up and the support I'm using as previously mentioned, is a spider beam 12 meter. Now, obviously, you can't use this at 12 meters, but it's an extremely strong pole, and I will be guying um, the antenna up about the six or seven meters point. Not ideal for a 20 meter antenna, but it should still perform uh, reasonably well. Um, and over here, this took me some time to untangle. This is a little pretensioner. Um, now, because the the, um, the fiberglass poles don't say straight, they need to be curved up a little bit. What I do is I fit this first. And then I fit the uh, the, an the uh, antenna itself. So what I'll do is I'll set it up on the pole. Or I'll actually set it up on the ground first. Um, it'll actually be easier doing that so I don't need a set of ladders. Um, and then we'll take it from there. This is the antenna set up. I'll just give you a little run around it. Um, so yeah, we'll go to our base plate. underneath as well. Now this plate is actually threaded but if this was actually going up and I was doing any more than testing then um, sorry I can't get that into focus for you. I'm trying to get it. I would actually put um, locking nuts on it. Um, 
the Epcox connection. That may or may not be having an impact on the antenna. Um, you can see at the ends, there's a tension wire, and then there's the antenna wire, and I'm using these little aluminium carabinas, which just clip on. So obviously those are on all four corners. Now, you might not see it from this angle, but the antenna's slightly off. Um, a little bit ski width um, and that's because two of, the, two of the poles are just slightly longer than the other two so I need to work at that and then the tension wire in the middle it's not quite perfect either it was just done a bit hash bash so I need to I need to um, once it's basically once I get the thing tuned um, so it could be the case of that I need to uh, lengthen the elements or I maybe need to play with this Spacing here, but let's get it up in the air. And I've kind of looked up on the looked out on the weather today. There's not a breath of wind, which is going to allow me not. If there was any wind at all, I would need to guide this further up. But I think because I'm going to be taking it up and down, I should be able just to um, not bother with guiding it further up. But I will be using the uh, the hose clamps there to hold it in place. Got this thing up in the air now, and this really is testament. So. If I just count the sections, that's like oof, it's up about one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven meters. It's up, and that really is testament to the spider beam poles, the strength of them. Now, if there's any sort of wind at all, I'd have that guide up there, and you can see the guy ring there. That's it there. So, I guess now I suppose I better get the analyzer on it and see what it's telling me. So this is the first sweep, and you can see that this is absolutely miles out. It's nearly one megahertz out. So I'm quite confident of where I've got the antenna mounted, at least I'm away from obstructions and so on. Um, so there you go. The, the low point is 1.9 SWR. There's the reactance and the resistance. So what I'll do first is I think I'll bring it down and I think I'll decouple it from that plate and I think I'll use a barrel connector to connect up the coax and then we'll see where we are. So disconnecting from the plate and using the barrel connector has made a little bit of difference but not a lot. Um, so now maybe I think I'll maybe need to take some measurements. Um, I think I'll take some measurements between the ends and see what it should be compared to the Moxon calculator. I'll do that first and see where we are. So I've had it down and then back up and actually on the ends, you can, probably won't see it very well but I've actually replaced the uh, string with cable ties because the distance was about 10 millimeters out on each side and it's made really as negligible difference, ever so slightly difference. So what I'm actually thinking was is my measurements for the wire itself must be out. I think that's really um, what it must be. Um, so I think what I'll need to do, um, I think I'll probably need to get the the um, wires down um, and actually measure them. Uh, see where it's resonant, take a note of this frequency here. So it's effectively 15 megahertz. Work, work out the percentage difference and then add on some extra wire. So just before I'm going to start cutting wires and measuring. I was actually able to get a little bit extra slack. And where you see the resonant frequency hasn't come down, you can see that the SWR has come down considerably. So that's really quite good. I'm quite pleased that's nearly at 1.2 to 1. Um, yeah, there we go. The X is no far off zero and the resistance 60 to 61. So whatever, whatever I've done has helped. Um, Basically, I had, I had, it's difficult to explain, but I constrained the ends with those little um, uh, aluminium carabinas. Basically, so each corner was in each corner, the wire couldn't kind of spin round in itself. And um, so by just taking those cable ties off, I was able to get a little bit more slack. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to have to drop it. I'm going to have to measure the lengths and then um, basically do some calculations hopefully add a little bit extra wire on and then see where we are. Right folks, I think I've um, sussed out why we're so far out and it looks to be 
major schoolboy error on my behalf. But never mind, I seem to have figured it out and we just need to move on. So this size here, this is the feed point here. So this size here, 4675 to here. It should have been 5042. This is in millimetres, by the way. So you can see that I'm, I need to add 367.8 or there or thereabouts. It won't need to be absolutely spot on. On this side, I need to add on 382.8. And on the big piece, this single piece at the back, the reflector, um, I measured uh, uh, 10265. It should be 10559. So I need to add on nearly 300 millimetres. So, um, yeah, big schoolboy error on my behalf. Whether it was because I was just trying to rush when I was measuring it initially, but uh, it certainly pays to uh, measure twice or perhaps three times and cut once, because I've learned the hard way. Um, so this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go and have a cup of coffee, get my head together, and then I'm going to add... So I'll need to add wire here, here, because we've already joined the feed point, so I'll add wire here and here, and I'll add wire on one side of this, um, but I can even that out. So I'll need to add both. Yeah, I just need to add that actually on this side. But you can see how far it's out, you know, it's out 2.8, nearly 3% this side, um, and a lot this side. So that's what I'm going to go and do. Fingers crossed, I've sussed out what's going wrong. Once I get it um, back together I'll need to double check and triple check the lengths and then we'll get it back in the air. Fingers crossed. So we seem to have had a bit of success here. So what I've done is I've actually lengthened all the wires. Um, but unfortunately with me doing that the poles that I'm using are not long enough. So what I'm actually going to have to do is I'm actually going to have to use these end sections here. The, the fifth section and I'm actually going to have to cut these down very carefully and add little extensions onto these four poles so the antenna is not tensioned up in any ways so it's not, I wouldn't say it's optimised but it is looking a lot, lot better so if we look at the SWR curve we can see the resonance points about 14.250 now I was aiming for 14.2 so we're going to cover the entire uh, 20 metre band um, an SWR less than 2 to 1 Hopefully the resonance dip will drop a bit more um, once I get the antenna a bit more rigid, but that's good. Um, you know, it proves that the, the Moxon calculator works, and I'm just lucky that the weather is that calm today um, that's allowing me to do this. So let's see if I can just have a little bit chin on the bands. I'm not too fussy about making some contacts, um, but let's just quickly plug into the 705 and see what happens. Mike Mike Zero Oscar Papa X ray. Mike Mike Zero Papa Oscar again. Yeah, it's Mike Mike Zero Oscar Papa X ray. Uh, Roger Roger Mike Mike Zero Oscar Papa X ray. Hello, my name is Martin Mike Alpha Romeo Tango India November Quizzer. QSL Martin, I didn't, uh, I didn't catch the whole of the call sign. The name is Colin, Charlie Oscar Lima, Italy, November. And I'm only running 5 watts, 5 watts into a homebrew Moxon antenna I'm just testing out there. So I'm just trying to rotate the antenna into uh, into your direction here. Back to you from MM0 OPX. Yeah, 73, bye bye. Right folks, time's got the better of me again. Um, that's the neighbours you can hear in the background. Um, 
I think I'd call it a success. So I've managed to get the antenna um, tuned in. I don't think it's perfect yet, I don't think it's fully optimised, but I need to get the spreader length sorted out. Uh, once I do that, I'm pretty confident um, this antenna will be a goer. Um, seen some good front to back. Um, really, it was peaking about 30 dB just with some European stations. Uh, I did hear a VK in there, um, working a European station there. They were very low, they weren't even registering a single uh, signal uh, reading. But I did hear them in there when I flipped the beam. Unfortunately, I was flipping towards the QRM. But I'm sure, you know, they're, they disappeared into the noise anyway. So I am seeing good front to back. So I think I'm going to see some decent game with this antenna. I tried to make one contact there, but uh, they lost me. But I don't think I was beaming right on them. And I'm again, I'm only running 5 watts. And a lot of these people are running beams. and So am I, but they're running a lot of power. So yeah, so that was an overview. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was of some use. If you if you have a, if you have a, a project or you want to do a Moxon project, I'd urge you to give it a go. Uh, I will do a follow up to this video. Um, basically, when I can get back to it, I need to work on some of these open points. Once I get the open points, um, I'm a bit more confident that I'd uh, run a, a rig with a bit more power, and we could give it a bit more uh, test out. But seeing what I've seen today, I'd actually be confident to put it up in my garden. I think that I could actually probably get this up there. I thought there was a lot of interactions in my garden, but I think it was just down to my poor measuring, measuring skills originally. So I think it's worth putting up at my home QTH and could be a, a temporary uh, gain antenna. Right, that's it, folks. Uh, thanks if you've lasted this long. Um, wish you 73 and see you in the next video.